There's a lot of rumors surrounding Top Thrill Dragster lately. We've heard the trains are getting sent to Knott's Berry Farm, Intamin isn't involved in the project, the launch will be replaced with LSMs, and also heard ideas such as they could increase the height of the top hat. They could make it have a swing launch with a 500 foot vertical spike. They could extend the layout into corkscrews plot and add inversions, and more. There's a lot to unpack here, and as an engineer, I like to make sense of things. As much as I want to see a swing launch into a 500 foot tall vertical spike, a 500 foot drop off the top hat into a full layout, I really don't think it's realistic. Here is my engineering perspective on all of these ideas and on the fate of Top Thrill Dragster. Now, I'm a really big fan of quantifying things with numbers, so for each claim I'm going to provide my thoughts from an engineer's perspective and give a percentage likelihood that I think we're going to see this happen. Let's begin with the top hat. The first claim, the top hat will be demolished. As most people know, a structure that tall, 420 feet tall in the air, is extremely difficult to build on or tear down after it's constructed. A team of people and a very heavy duty crane is going to be needed to modify it. They can't simply just topple it over because it would damage too much and other areas in the park. So someone's going to have to unscrew the bolts in the beams or cut it, but I think they would just unscrew the bolts. And then they'd have to meticulously take it apart piece by piece with a crane. As you can imagine, this would be very expensive and a very tedious process. You know, we're likely talking millions of dollars here. That plus, the top hat is such a huge part of the Cedar Point skyline, I doubt that they would take it down. If the structure for the top hat is still in great shape, it really does not make sense for them to remove it, especially if they can repurpose it and reuse it. That being said, it's still a very small possibility that they do, so I give this a 2% chance of occurring that they do tear down the top hat. Second claim, they will build upon the top hat and make it taller to reclaim the tallest roller coaster in the world. While this is a nice idea and they'd only have to build up like 30 feet on top of it to do it, I think this one is pretty much impossible. The structure for Top Thrill Dragster is 20 years old and was designed with ASTM standards to support the current weight of the tower and the trains. Any additional weight or supports added to the tower would be beyond what it was specifically designed for, even accounting for the factor of safety. Basically, if they wanted to build the top hat taller, they would likely need to brace the structure even more than it already is, and it's a 20-year-old structure too. And like the last claim, it would be insanely expensive to have teams of people working 400 plus feet in the air to do this. You'd also have to consider that Dragster would need even more speed to crest over the top hat, which would be more difficult with an LSM launch that it's probably getting. You know, we also need to take a step back here and put ourselves in the Cedar Point executive shoes. We aren't asking the right questions here at all. After they determined the top throw dragster would be worth refurbishing, what questions do you think that they would be asking? I doubt it was, what can we do to take back the height record? Or what can we do to make this a better roller coaster? No, they're probably asking, how can we make dragster more reliable while keeping the top hat? How can we increase capacity? How can we make the ride safer? How can we market this new coaster? And how can we achieve this with a reasonable cost? Adding onto the top hat is not the way to make Dragster more reliable or keep costs down. And it sounds like it would be a structural nightmare. I give this less than a 0.1% chance of happening. So finishing my thoughts on the top hat, it likely isn't going anywhere. They may replace track on it, but I don't think the structure is going to be touched. I think it's about a 98% chance that the top hat is staying as is. Now onto the third claim. The queue line or station will be modified for the new ride. In order to prevent the accident from 2021 from occurring again, I think it's very likely they reroute the queue line closer to the end near the station. And I think the station will be in the same spot or very close to the same spot. This should be a pretty easy fix and I think there's about a 90% chance that this happens. Fifth claim, Dragster will get new trains. Now I'll be honest, I don't know the specifics on whether Dragster's trains can be reconfigured for LSMs as opposed to its old hydraulic launch, but with new track coming in and the freak accident that happened with the flag plate coming off the train last year, I think this one is pretty likely. I'll give this one a 75% chance that Dragster gets new trains. Pause, editing Evan here. We are seeing changes happen to Dragster very quickly and more and more are coming out even since I recorded this video. Cedar Point has since removed all of the gates within the station, which only further points to them getting new trains and possibly rerouting the queue line. I think it's likely they keep the station in the same spot, but we'll have to see. There could be a lot more changes coming soon. All right, back to the video. Sixth claim, Dragster will be renamed or rethemed. 
This one primarily comes from the tweet Cedar Point put out that said Dragster will be officially retired. I think this tells us all that we need to know regarding the name or theme. They would have used renovated, refurbished, or replaced, or something along those lines, not retiring. So it's likely we see Dragster with a new name and or a retheme. The seventh claim, Dragster will have its layout extended. I really want this one to be true, but I really don't know about it and I don't want to get my hopes up too much. With most of the launch and the brake tracks removed, we can see that they were very careful to leave the supports up for the ride, meaning that they will likely be reused. Now this doesn't totally discount that they could extend the layout after the top hat, but it doesn't help the case. If Dragster continues to load and prep two trains at a time for launching, then it's going to need a block zone almost immediately after the top hat in order to keep capacity up. With this, and a combination of a very high price tag, I don't think it's very likely, but it's definitely possible, especially if they want a better way to market the ride as a new and reimagined experience like they were saying. So I'm going to give this about a 25% chance of occurring. Now on to the eighth claim, Intamin is not working on the project. I don't know where this rumor is coming from, but I personally find it very hard to believe. Intamin's supplier in DriveTech makes LSMs for almost every coaster manufacturer, but I also don't think it's likely they go straight to InDriveTech and work on this in-house. It seems like too big of a project for in-house engineers to tackle, but I have no idea in honesty. The only other manufacturers I could really see taking on this project are SNS and RMC, but I just don't see it going to them. This is a really tough one, but I'm going to give it a 60% chance that Intamin is still involved on the project. Now the ninth claim. They could make Dragster into an LSM swing launch and have a vertical spike that is 500 feet tall to break the height record. This one is intriguing. We have seen a new trend with Intamin shuttle coasters and roller coasters with multiple launches, but I see a major problem here. With how long Dragster's launch track is, it would take way too long for this coaster to launch forward and scale halfway up the top hat, come back, launch back, up into the spike and go all the way up the spike and then all the way back down then launch forward again and go over the top hat before the next train can launch. I did some basic calculations with the kinematics formulas to test my theory and estimate how long it would take this shuttle launch dragster to clear the top hat. I'll spare you the calculations but if we assume the coaster launched up the top hat 350 feet then came back down launched backwards and scaled up 500 feet into the spike and then launch forward again to clear the top hat like it normally does, it would take about 57.3 seconds. And that is best case scenario too. It would probably be more like 70 seconds accounting for speed changes, sensor response times, and the time it takes to transfer over to the launch track. And the next launch could not start until the previous train reached the next block zone at the bottom of the top hat. This is way too long for a train to wait in the station if they reuse the old setup of loading two 18 passenger trains. Comparing this to a similar coaster in Pantheon, you can see that it would take about 17 seconds longer. And that's best case scenario, it would probably be more like 30 seconds longer. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is. Even with Dragster's launch being only 17 seconds longer, that's already a 42% difference, which is really significant. If this was done, the coaster would either have to launch backwards first, to which there isn't enough room to go up a spike of any substantial height if the station remains where it is, or they would have to get new trains significantly longer to combat the low capacity. Either way, as cool of an idea as this is, I don't see it very likely. It would add incredible costs and lower the capacity. I give it only about a 5% chance of occurring. So yes, there is a chance this happens, but still very, very unlikely. So in total, here are the summaries on the screen of what I think will happen to Top Thrill Dragster and the likelihood of them occurring. In essence, I think it's extremely likely to get an LSM launch, a new name or theme, a new queue line, and keep the top hat the same. I think it's likely that they get new trains. I think it's about a 50-50 that Intamin is involved in the project, but I'm leaning more towards yes. It's unlikely but possible that the layout gets extended. It's highly unlikely that they turn it into a swing launch. It's extremely unlikely they remove the top hat altogether, and there's basically no chance they build the top hat taller to break the height record. Now, I don't work for Cedar Point or have a crystal ball, so I'm just making an educated guess on all of this. This video is not to discount great ideas in the community or to discourage creative thinking, but rather keep us grounded and keep our expectations realistic. I'm honestly worried that many enthusiasts are setting way too high of expectations for this dragster refurbishment project, which only leads to disappointment in the end. It's good to keep an open mind and dream big, 
but let's stay grounded a little bit and keep our expectations in check. It's not a bad idea to lower your expectations a little bit when it comes to new coaster announcements, as it may leave you pleasantly surprised in the end. Let me know what you guys think will happen to Dragster, or if you have any other ideas in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing, as I release coaster content twice a week. There will be plenty more awesome coaster videos coming in the future, so I will see you in the next one, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.